Hey guys, what is up? So I watched David Dobrik's discussing what happened, so you don't have to, and let's just get right into this 53 minute video. So David off the bat discusses with Jason that he doesn't really feel comfortable, you know, talking about his feelings because he was never into movies that focused on real emotions and drama. Then David goes on to say that he likes like the really lighthearted movies and that his content is for to make people laugh like he doesn't want to do the opposite. Now I do like to note that I believe and I'm sure many other people believe that there's a reason why David is posting this video now as opposed to like months and months ago but I'll state my opinions at the end. Jason Nash mentions that he's never really seen David this way like after the scandal. David would be on the couch all the time. Him and Natalie would come over every day. David shares with us that he would read comments like something along the lines of this is the happiest I've ever seen him and David shares with us that this is so farther from the truth. David even says that he hopes this cancellation doesn't last forever and then Jason who's really like navigating this conversation here. I mean yes there's Natalie there for support but Jason is really for the first time Jason is acting his age and you know that's when I'm also reminded like oh yeah he's also a dad. So it was very interesting to see Jason actually be serious and he was also basically navigating this whole entire conversation. So as David's mentioning that you know he just wants this whole thing to be over with you know Jason's like well we have to start with Jeff there's so many like things we need to answer for so let's start with Jeff. Now this is when they share that they did ask Jeff to be on this podcast but for obvious reasons Jeff denied. You know it's like if what Jeff said was true about David not communicating with him after his surgery, then why would Jeff then want to communicate with him with a bunch of people on David's platform? Before David chimes into Jeff Wittick, he gives us this disclaimer that this was also the worst day of his life as well, and that if he could take back this day, he would. Now anyone who has watched this, I mean, this is a video I watched so you don't have to, but I'm thinking, did you tell Jeff this? David also gives us this disclaimer that this was just an absolute accident. I know Jeff did a video and it wasn't the video reacting to like, you know, this video, but he recently put out a video on Jeff FM, his podcast, and he basically insinuated that David could have done this on purpose. So I know David's just putting it out there like, no, this was not intentional. So here Jason is navigating the conversation again and he asked David like let's start from the beginning. So what exactly happened that day? David explains that you know he was doing a collaboration with another YouTuber. This video was supposed to be like their big comeback because of the whole pandemic 2020. David stopped filming yada yada. Natalie even chimes in and she explains that during this time of the vlog the whole big comeback video you know her, Jeff, and other people have done a bunch of like skydiving trips <laughs> you know and they all have this adrenaline and Jeff wanted to do something exciting and crazy. David shares with us that while they were filming that day Jeff asked David if he can get on that excavator and David was 100% down. David admits like he was like yeah let's do it. Natalie basically signs off on this because Natalie continues on saying that, you know, Jeff, he was just like, he was so high energy because of all the skydiving and he wanted to do something crazy. And this kind of reminds me when they keep talking about this adrenaline and energy. This reminds me of um, Spongebob <laughs> living like Larry. Was it living large like Larry? Anyways, it was hilarious. And it just reminds me of basically that whole entire mood. Jeff wanted to live like Larry. <laughs> At this time, Jason shares with us that he wasn't actually there when the accident went down. So Jason explains to us that he had to go potty, but before he left, you know, he saw uh, Jeff or someone else on the excavator and it was swinging very slowly, like nothing was going like 60 miles per hour. And then it wasn't until after he finished his business in the restroom or bathroom, whatever, he received a text message or a call stating that, you know, we're bringing Jeff to the hospital. Jason also explains to us to kind of answer the people who were like, you know, you're the older person of the group. How come you didn't say anything? So Jason says that, you know, he wasn't there and it's usually him and Matt King who are the more opinionated or like cautious people when it comes to this type of stuff. David shares with us that when he went to the hospital with Jeff, Jeff was in good spirits and he didn't really know how to, like he didn't know whether to be serious, whether to be goofy. Then 
then, 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 here's the interesting part. So David goes on to say that at the hospital, you know, he didn't see this DM by Jeff, but he shows us this like meme or video of this guy getting on an excavator and it was a DM of Jeff saying, hey, we should do something like this. David even shares with us that Jeff's response to this was, well, still, I didn't mean like this, like going 60 miles per hour. So noted here, that Jeff actually did have some type of intentions on going on the excavator. And it wasn't just like David's idea when Jeff was sending him videos of what he should be doing. And just honestly, the action of David showing this on the screen, he's illustrating here that look, you know, yes, this was my fault for, you know, I was operating the crane, the excavator, but this was Jeff's idea. And take a listen to what he says. Um. And then he asked, he's like, can you, can, you pro can you promise me one thing? And I said, what? And he's like, can you just promise that no one ever knows that this was my idea? And I was like, absolutely. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, and then that's the promise I broke recently. Um, and, and, and I don't know. And, and, and here's the thing. I don't understand why that bothered him so much. Because at the end of the day, I was the one driving it. It was Man. my video. I was the one sitting there. It's clear as day. I am the one controlling the thing. He got hurt because I was driving. That's it. And I know that. And, and like I said, I would, any chance I would get, I would take that back. David shares with us the promise that he broke recently, how Jeff was like, look, we're not going to play this. Like, this was my fault. You know, no, this is going to be your fault. David broke that promise because he doesn't say Casey Neinstadt, but there is a documentary coming out and David was being interviewed and, you know, David said something along the lines of, you know, this was Jeff's fault, paraphrasing. And there was an agreement that David would never say anything like that. David also shared with us that when Jeff shared with him that he wanted to make a documentary, David was down. David says that he was very supportive. But something weird was going on, David said. So... There was a day when they were filming, I guess someone from Jeff's team was talking to one of David's friends and saying, you know, we want David to really cry here. You know, when David says that this is his fault, we want him to really cry here, you know? And David's just kind of like, that's weird. That's when he felt like he was being pushed into a corner and there was some dishonesty going on. He also goes on to say that when the documentary came out, there were things like David wasn't there for Jeff and David agrees with that. David admits that this was all true because, you know, when Jeff's accident happened, he didn't really know how to handle the situation. He didn't know whether Jeff needed space. Jeff would complain to some people in the squad or just have a conversation with them like, you know, if David ever comes back over here, I'm going to beat his ass. And what David to me is basically saying that Jeff was very passive aggressive. And for me, I just feel like that whole accident, it would take a lot to process. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't even know how to feel, you know, because when Jeff goes to sleep, and then especially during that time, his eye must have been hurting him like crazy. Like, you know, when Jeff wakes up, he's always gonna think about David. So I'm sure at that time, Jeff was also processing what was going on as well. You know, and I think that's why one day Jeff may have liked David. The other day, Jeff was like, F David, you know what I mean? <laughs> Look, I've never been anything like that, but I can imagine it being a process and it still is for Jeff. David goes on to say that he didn't mind taking the blame for Jeff. He didn't mind because he was the one operating the thing. Like, yeah, 100% his fault. But David didn't like the idea that Jeff's narrative was, no, this was David's fault. He tried to get me on this thing, etc. And I agree with David on this. I don't think it's fair that even presently Jeff will take blame and admit to it, but I don't think it's fair for Jeff to be like, if you wanted to get on that crane, Jeff, then that's fine. That's still David's fault as well. But I don't think it's fair even in that hospital room to be like, no, let's just blame everything on you. In my opinion, I don't think that's fair. Now, because Jeff isn't there to defend himself, Jason talks to Jeff. So Jason was mentioning some things that Jeff had a problem with. And the first thing was the Hawaii trip. Now, apparently there was a Hawaii trip where David surprised his friends 
and it happened to be around the same time that Jeff had his eye surgery and Jeff felt like David didn't care because David just, you know, he scheduled the trip around that time. That's what Jeff is saying. David and Natalie, they both say that they never knew when Jeff's eye surgeries were and that he never communicated that with them as well. And David even goes on to say that Jeff's eye surgery actually happened at last minute. Jason also mentions Jeff's second complaint, and that was the hospital bills. But according to David and Natalie, you know, Natalie tried to reach out to Jeff's assistant, and I guess Jeff's assistant didn't respond, or there was no communication. Whatever the case may be, David shares with us that he will pay for Jeff's hospital bills. There was just no, like, line of communications with that, because Jeff was saying that David stopped paying for his hospital bills, and, you know, that messed up his credit, and David it's like, no, I paid at least like $78,000 of the hospital bills and the rest, they weren't given to me or my assistant. So to me, it kind of sounds like there's a little bit of rich people problem going on because let me tell you this, if something happened to me and someone was offering to pay it, then, you know, I'm never going to lose that line of communication. But, you know, we don't know until we watch Jeff's video or his reaction to all of this. And then David starts to get emotional. Take a listen. That's part of the reason I want to do this is like, this weighs on me every fucking minute of every day of my life. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm so late. But like, but like, it fucking, it's like the worst. Why are you crying? <laughs> um, no, so, it's just. I feel so bad. No, no. <laughs> it was your fault. You shouldn't have left for the bathroom. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel so bad for you, man. No, no, and, and, no, no, and, don't do and, that. And, no, I know, and Jeff, feel bad for Jeff. Yes, 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 yes. Jeff is the first person I feel bad for, and then after that, I, I, I Natalie, <laughs> Natalie, who puts up with you, and then I feel bad for myself. <laughs> you got me that dog I can't take care of. Um, no, but <laughs> I can't keep up with him, man. <laughs> no, this blows. It blows it's such a bad shit situation david goes on to say that it doesn't matter at the end of the day what happens what jeff says what he says what we say you know the accident it happened and jeff has to live with this and you know he feels awful about it david even mentions a time that during jeff's documentary that he did apologize to jeff that he did have these conversations that he had in this video like he did have this with jeff during that documentary, he did apologize to Jeff off screen, but Jeff wanted David to apologize to him on screen. David shares that he apologized to Jeff twice on screen. They had to do a retake. And it was weird to me that David was acting like, like it just felt really weird that I had to do the apology, like it didn't feel authentic. And I'm like, how many times have you had to do retakes for your vlogs and stuff? Like, why are we acting like this isn't normal? Yes, you did apologize to Jeff off screen, but let's not act like y'all don't do retakes or whatever on the vlogs. Then David also discusses the roast, the Bryce Hall roast. And Jeff accused David of taking out the jokes that Jeff made about David in the Bryce Hall roast. David is also upset about that too because David's like, you know, I'm not trying to silence anyone. Of course, the conversations I had with Jeff, I wanted that to remain private. But overall, like, I'm not trying to, like, silence anyone. David shares with us that the joke was something along the lines. Jeff said something like, oh, David's on the Discovery Channel. The only thing that they're going to discover is that David is gay. Ha ha ha. Um... So that was it and that got taken out. I know Jason Nash came out with a video stating that the reason for that was because there was sponsorships involved, yada, yada, yada. David says that he wished he would have communicated more and vice versa. He even goes on to say that, you know, he will see comments like, did David Dobrik forget what he did? And he's like, no, of course not. Like I wake up every single day and I, I don't forget. I'm aware of what I did. You know, he also mentions that now when he does any goofy stunts in his videos, that he has the proper people, like the professional people there. He even tells us that he's learning to say no, even when people are offering him to do like crazy stunts or they are offering to do crazy stunts. He's still like, no, it's a bad idea idea it's not worth it then jason also asked david does he think that he could be more empathetic in his life and david's just like look after this incident this incident has changed me and i've been learning not only to walk in other people's shoes but to also walk in other people's shoes but 
also think about how they would think not just like walking in their shoes and thinking what I would do but I need to also be thinking about how they would do things how they would react before I get into my opinions towards the end of the video Jason reiterates that he is so happy to see David off of the couch and smiling again and it's so funny because you know Jeff becomes this afterthought every single time and I know it could be because they're all nervous filming this they even joke saying like we might get canceled after this podcast but Jeff becomes such an afterthought because every single time Jason's like you know I'm so glad you're smiling again and I want to see Jeff smile too and you know things like that so I'm like poor Jeff the afterthought so David ends the podcast by saying that this isn't to point fingers. This is more of like a conversation that he would also, this is how he would be if he was talking to his therapist. So that was the video. And the whole entire video to me, what is annoying to me is that David Dobrik has a pattern of only responding to things when he's forced to. So the real question is, why now? Why post this video? And he's saying, you know, he doesn't like to, like, share his feelings. But does it have anything to do with Casey Neistat coming out with a documentary next month or in a few weeks? That could also be another cancellation for David Dobrik. Does it have anything to do with that? It's just very strange with the timing again, because if you recall, when David Dobrik was being canceled the first time around, inside her article wanted Trisha Paytas' statement, and David Dobrik and his attorneys tried to do everything to get Trisha Paytas off of that insider article. But when he was losing sponsorships and all of that, that's all of a sudden when he wanted to be genuine and sincere. It was like a little bit too late because no one really believed anything he really had to say. So I do believe David Dobrik was being truthful here, but the question still remains, if someone had to force you to do this or if something was about to happen that forced you to do this, like, you know, Casey Neinstadt's documentary, how sincere is it really? You know? So that's really the question. Like, I do believe I was seeing really raw emotions and I do believe it. I just... It puts a bad taste in my mouth, a red flag, because it's just always this pattern of David Dobrik always doing something when he has no other choice but to do it. So yeah, that's my opinion about this whole entire video. It's like I believed it, but there was like this huge fog over it or it was this huge filter over it. But yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think because that's where I'm at. I think the video would have been great a few months ago, you know? <laughs> I just think the timing is very suspicious. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon on the next video. Bye guys.